were asked to use polynomial fitting to find the formula for the nth term of the sequence a sub n where n is greater than or equal to zero, which starts with 0, 3, 8, 15, 24, 35, and so on. The closed formula for a sequence will be a degree k polynomial if and only if the sequence is delta k constant, meaning the kth sequence of differences is constant. Using the method of polynomial fitting, once we determine that a sequence is delta k constant, we know the closed formula is going to be a degree k polynomial, and therefore the next step is to determine the coefficients of the closed formula by setting up and solving a system of equations. To begin, we need to determine whether the given sequence is delta k constant. The first step is to determine the sequence of first differences. Three minus zero is three, eight minus three is five, 15 minus eight is seven, 24 minus 15 is nine, 35 minus 24 is 11, and so on. We may notice the sequence of first differences is an arithmetic sequence, and therefore the sequence of second differences, which is the sequence of the differences of the first differences, will be a constant sequence. Five minus three is two, seven minus five is two, nine minus seven is two, and so on. Because the sequence of second differences is a constant sequence, we now know the original sequence is delta two constant, and therefore the closed formula must be a degree two polynomial or in the form a sub n equals a n squared plus b n plus c. And now we need to determine the values of a, b, and c by setting up and solving a system of equations. To do this, we'll use the first three terms in the original sequence, which are a sub zero, a sub one, and a sub two. For a sub zero, n is equal to zero. Subbing zero for n into the closed formula, we have a sub zero equals a times the square of zero plus b times zero plus c equals zero. Simplifying this equation, notice how we get c equals zero. Next, we use the term a sub one. When n is equal to one, we have a sub one equals a times one squared plus b times one plus c, but we know c is zero, which must equal three. Simplifying, we have the equation a plus b equals three. Next, we use a sub two, which is equal to eight. When determining a sub two, n is equal to two. a sub two is equal to a times the square of two plus b times two plus c, but again, c is equal to zero, which equals a sub two, which we know is eight. Simplifying, we have the equation four a plus two b equals eight. So again, once we determine the values of a, b, and c, we will know the closed formula for the original sequence. We already know c is equal to zero, and therefore we need to solve the system of equations a plus b equals three, and four a plus two b equals eight. There's a variety of ways we can solve this. In the last example, we solved it using algebra, using elimination. In this example, I'm gonna use an augmented matrix. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, here we have our three equations. Now we do have a choice. We do have three equations with three variables, which means if we choose to use the equation c equals zero, which is optional, we would have a three by four augmented matrix, but we can also ignore the equation c equals zero because we know the value of c, and we could just solve the system of two equations with the variables a and b using a two by three augmented matrix. I'll go ahead and show both setups. So in the first row, we are using the equation c equals zero. In the augmented matrix, the first column contains the coefficients of a, the second column contains the coefficients of b, the third column contains the coefficients of c, and the fourth column contains the constants on the right. So the equation c equals zero is the first row of zero, zero, one, zero. The second equation gives the second row of one, one, zero, three, and the third equation gives the third row of four, two, zero, eight. The next step is to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which is shown here on the right. The first row indicates A equals one, the second row indicates B equals two, the third row indicates C equals zero. Again, the other option is to ignore the first equation because we already know C is equal to zero and set up a two by three augmented matrix, which is shown here below, where the first row one, one, three represents the equation A plus B equals three, and the second row, 428, represents the equation 4a plus 2b equals eight. Writing this matrix in reduced row echelon form, again, the first row indicates a equals one, the second row indicates b equals two, and we have to remember c is equal to zero. Whichever technique we use, we now know a equals one, b equals two, and c equals zero, which is what we need to determine the closed formula. We now substitute the values of a, b, and c into the closed formula, a sub n equals a n squared plus b n plus c, which gives us a sub n equals one n squared plus two n plus zero, 
which simplifies to a sub n equals n squared plus 2n. I hope you found this helpful.